listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for your support of The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. We are in Holy Week this week, a week of meditation and contemplation on Christ and his journey to the cross for us. And we're going to dig into a psalm that relates to Holy Week, Psalm 22. And joining us today to do that is the Reverend Andrew Jones, pastor of First Lutheran Church and Preschool in Concord, California. Thanks for joining us today, Pastor Jones. Thanks for having me. So as we dig into Psalm 22 and how it relates to Holy Week, what is the place of Psalm 22 during this week? Where do we hear it? So we actually hear it in two spots, potentially. Uh, the, the first most obvious spot is that it's one of the psalms that's chosen by the lectionary and appointed by the lectionary for Good Friday, the other being Psalm 31. And so if you're Good Friday service uses the psalm of the day, you may very well hear Psalm 22. But some Good Friday services don't use the psalms. They're more focused on the the passion narrative from John or one of the other gospels. And so you might actually not hear it on Good Friday, but you may hear it also on Monday, Thursday. Um, Psalm 22 is traditionally the psalm that is spoken as the altar is being stripped on Monday, Thursday. So it could be either be spoken or chanted. Um, so you could hear it then as well. Uh, if your congregation doesn't do a stripping of the altar, though, you might not hear it then either. So it just depends on sort of what your congregation does. But yeah, Monday, Thursday or Good Friday are both potentials to hear Psalm 22 during your Holy Week worship time. So we hear it during Holy Week. What's the the overall theme for this psalm that we, we often hear during Holy Week? Might hear it at other times as well. Yeah, so Psalm 22 is really a psalm of, of lament. Uh, if you read through it, you really see that the author, David, is really, really in pain. It seems like everything is, is just going wrong in this psalm. As you read through it, he'll be using phrases like he's, he's being surrounded. Uh, he, he talks about the way his body feels. He's being poured out. His bones are out of joint. His heart is melting like wax. It's really a psalm that, that names the suffering that the author is going through. And yet at the same time, there's this back and forth between this pain and suffering and a little bit of hope. And this happens in these different sections that are sort of called these me and you sections. And so the me sections are very painful and very naming the suffering. And the you sections are more about God and his faithfulness, despite the suffering that David is going through. So even though it's a psalm that's really a lament, it's really about David's suffering, It's much more thematic to say that it's a psalm of trust. It's a psalm of faithfulness, despite the suffering that he's going through, despite the suffering that we go through. So that's what I would call the under the overall theme is that it's it's trusting in God through suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned those me and you sections. I don't know how many times I've heard this psalm on Monday Thursday during the stripping of the altar, and I never realized that those it was in those sections like that. That is a really interesting thing that I'm going to pay attention to now uh, on Monday, Thursday this week as as the altar is stripped. Very interesting. Why is a psalm like this um, maybe more useful to us? I don't know if that's a good way, but why is this useful to us during Holy Week to to hear this song of, of lament and meditate on a psalm like this? That is a good question. Um, for me personally, I think that the the past year, the past several years, maybe we, there are people that are going through a lot of pain and suffering. Um, I know the last year has not been easy f- for me personally at all. And so part of, I think, the time of Holy Week is obviously a time to meditate on what Christ suffers for us. Christ suffers on our behalf. And we can identify with Jesus in that suffering and the things that we go through in in day-to-day life. 
But sometimes we don't know how to do that. Sometimes we don't know how to speak to God about what we are going through and the pain that we are in. And we can be really tempted to to sugarcoat what we're going through and pretend like life is better than it really is. We can be tempted to just not name our suffering and keep it to ourselves. And I think what this psalm really does, especially in this week, is it draws us out and it says, be honest. Be honest about what you are going through, no matter what the suffering is, because Jesus suffered for you. He can take suffering and he can listen to your suffering as well. We can admit our our frailties. We can admit our vulnerabilities. We can admit our fears to him and he will listen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's this struggle that we go through in Holy Week as we watch Jesus go through all of this. We can identify points in our lives where we have suffered, where we have struggled, where we have gone through, not to the extent that he does perhaps, but we have gone through suffering like David is naming in this psalm. And David is a great faithful witness to us that says, you can bring these words to the Lord and he will listen. So for me, that's that's sort of the what I take away from it is it helps me articulate what I'm going through to the Lord in a faithful, trusting way. Mm -hmm. So let's dig into the Psalm a little bit deeper. Um, It's starting at the beginning, even the, the, the first verse of this alludes to other things in our scriptures. What do we, what do we learn in the, in the first uh, verse or two of Psalm 22? So the first verse is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And for, for most of us, that draws us immediately to Jesus on the cross. These are words that Jesus speaks from the cross, very intentionally quoting Psalm 22 here. And so I think for, for most of us, when we hear those words, we are drawn immediately to the cross. We're drawn immediately to Good Friday. And as we look at some of the things that are said, there's this pain that's being expressed. Why are you so far from saving me? I cry to you by day, O God, but you do not answer. And I think we can see in Jesus' sufferings, in Jesus' passion, both in Gethsemane and on the cross and any time in between, that he might have been feeling or thinking these words. And we do actually see him say these words, at least the first line of verse one, from the cross. So I think that's that's where the psalm sort of sets us now on the other side of the cross, is it points us immediately there and focuses our attention on Jesus. Moving further into the into the psalm, uh, a few verses down now, where does that take us, what, uh, three through five? Yeah, so the movement of the psalm, so the first two verses are one of those I sections, and verses three to five are one of those you sections that are about God and his faithfulness. And three to five, to me, it draws us back in time a little bit. It draws us back to, to Monday, Thursday in particular. Uh, as, as Jesus is celebrating the, the Last Supper on Monday, Thursday, as he's celebrating this Passover meal with his disciples, one of the big themes of the Passover is that the, the, the ancient people of Israel trusted in the Lord and he delivered them out of slavery in Egypt. And that's what we really see in verse four. And you, our fathers, trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. So to me, I'm drawn back to Monday, Thursday in that time where people are are meditating upon the, the deliverance of God, the salvation of God that has come to them in the past. And as David is suffering, he goes back to that time of the Passover, remembering how God has been faithful to his people through generation after generation and delivered them out of anything that they were going through. You might also find, I think, some Palm Sunday overtones as well in this sense of verse five, they cried to you and you were rescued. Um, To me, that evokes sort of this idea of, of Hosanna, save us, Lord. They cry and they're looking for deliverance. They're looking for rescue. And that's what Jesus is coming to do even if he's coming to save them from something they maybe aren't expecting to save them from sin and death. So to me, one to two are 
focus in on Good Friday. Three to five sort of moves us back in the week a little bit, probably to Monday, Thursday, or even Palm Sunday. So then moving into the next few verses, uh, do these allude back to Good Friday then? Yeah. So to me, that's where I see the psalm moving is from 6 to 18, that entire time is really zeroed back in on Good Friday. It's zeroed in on what Jesus experiences on the cross. And we'll see different things in some of these verses that are directly quoted in some of the Gospels and the Passion narratives. We'll see other things that are alluded to as well. But just the entire tone of 6 to 18 is much more suffering. Like that is the the bulk of the suffering of this psalm is placed in 6 to 18. And even the sections that are meant to be a little more hopeful aren't quite as hopeful. Uh, so I really see 6 to 18 hitting all of those things. Um, we'll talk a little bit later, I think, about the the way that these are particularly fulfilled in Jesus but that's sort of the movement uh, up to 18. And then once we hit verse 19, I think we transition out of Good Friday and transition more towards Holy Saturday, the day that Jesus rests in the tomb. Verse 19 begins with the words, but you, O Lord, do not be far off. And there's this sort of sense of hopefulness that isn't really present earlier in the psalm, like things are actually going to turn around now. And so I see verses 19 to 21 really as a transition out of pain and suffering, leading us ever more towards hopefulness. And then once we hit verse 22, we're not in suffering anymore. God has worked to deliver David from whatever he's going through in verse 22 and 22 until the end uh, is, is really much more hopeful. And we see some allusions to Easter and even Pentecost and beyond in some of those verses as well. So that's where I see the movement going from sort of Monday, Thursday, all the way through Easter and beyond. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to, to view this psalm as we meditate on it during Holy Week. And we will look more into the New Testament connections. And there there are a lot of them in this psalm, but we have to take a quick break first. We're talking with the Reverend Andrew Jones about Psalm 22 during Holy Week. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. We're talking with the Reverend Andrew Jones, pastor of First Lutheran Church and Preschool in Concord, California, about Psalm 22 during Holy Week, the connections of Psalm 22 to the events during Holy Week and the connections that it has to the New Testament. So, Pastor, there are there are a lot of verses in here that are quoted in New Testament uh, verses. Where would you like to to start with looking at those connections? Why don't we just uh, start at the beginning again? So yeah. verse one, we, as we said, Jesus quotes verse one from the cross saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I think as Jesus does that, he really wants to point us back to this psalm to look at to look at the whole of it and to see how it's not just that first verse that connects to what is happening on the cross, but it's really the entirety of what he is going through. And so if we, if we skip ahead a little bit to verses six and seven, that's where I think like the good Friday section sort of begins. We'll see in verse seven, it says, all who see me mock me, 
They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. And this is something that's uh, alluded to very clearly, especially in Matthew and Mark in their passion narratives, how Jesus is mocked. People are making fun of him from the cross. There's even a phrase that's used that they're making mouths at him, uh, this sort of insulting way to, to just a way to insult someone and make fun of them. I imagine it like sort of uh, blowing raspberries or something like that at him, sticking their tongue out. Um, and as it moves on a little bit, verse eight, we see this line, he trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. And this is actually quoted at Jesus by the chief priests as he's suffering on the cross in Matthew 27. Um, it's sort of ironic. They're, they're quoting this verse at him, not realizing what they're saying, not realizing that they're equating him with King David as they do this. Uh, it, it's just this horrifying thing that they're doing to him. And then they're insulting him on top of that with something that they don't even know how true it is that they're saying. So verses six to eight really hit hard on Jesus on the cross. Moving ahead a little bit, uh, as we get to verse 16, the last line of verse 16 is, they have pierced my hands and feet. That seems like a pretty clear connection to Jesus being crucified as his hands and feet are both nailed to the cross. And then verse 18 in particular is one that uh, John, John's gospel calls out as being fulfilled by Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. They divide my garments among them and for my clothing, they cast lots. So John, John calls this a fulfillment of scripture in John 19, 24, saying that this is what happened to Jesus to fulfill the scriptures. So all of these things hit these Good Friday fulfillments which is part of the reason why it's it's a psalm that we tend to read on Good Friday and focus on on Good Friday because it really hits home those things. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the latter part of the psalm, though, that doesn't get as much attention. We, we draw our attention to it for, for Thursday and Friday because it has this, this theme of suffering. But we tend not to look so much at the latter part of the psalm and how it's fulfilled in the scriptures. The one place I want to really draw our attention to for this is verse 22. Verse 22 says, I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Uh, in, in his commentary on Psalms 1 to 50, Dr. Tim Seleska, I, I call him coach, but you know, everyone else could call him <laughs> Dr. Seleska. Um, he really points this one out as connected to John 20 verse 17. So when Jesus is risen from the dead on Easter morning, he appears to Mary and he tells her uh, about going to the brothers, my brothers. So it connects back to this. I will tell of your name to my brothers in verse 22. This is also in Matthew 28, 10. Again, Easter morning, Jesus is appearing to the women on Easter morning. And the angel has told the women, go and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead go and tell his disciples he's going to Galilee before you. But when Jesus appears to them, he doesn't say my disciples. He says my brothers, which is again calling attention to this verse 22 as this, I'm going to tell your name to my brothers when I appear to them uh, after the suffering is done, after the suffering has been conquered. And the book of Hebrews quotes this verse too as a, a fulfillment of that Jesus has it even puts these words in his mouth in Hebrews 2 12 from verse 22. So those things all point me to that this Psalm is not just about Monday, Thursday and good Friday, but it is also about Easter and beyond. It's about God being with us through the sufferings of good Friday and into the joys of Easter. Uh, but a couple couple more places on the latter part of the psalm that I find connections to uh, and fulfillments, if you want to put it that way. Uh, verses 27 and 28. 
verses tw- verse 27 says, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. To me, this really evokes Pentecost in particular. Um, you think about what happens in, on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. All of these different nations are gathered together in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. All of them are gathered already together. And before this, when Jesus is about to ascend into the heavens in Acts chapter 1, he tells his disciples, you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And here we find in verse 27, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And we see this happening on Pentecost as all of these nations turn to the Lord. But we see it happening in the ministry of the apostles as they get sent out to the ends of the earth to be witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. They are proclaiming all of the things that are here in Psalm 22 as fulfillments that Jesus has done for us. Uh, we might also draw our attention to this all nations aspect in verse 28, for kingship belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. Uh, as we think about Matthew 28 and the disciples being sent to make disciples of all nations, we can see a connection there as well, that Jesus is king. He has all authority in heaven and on earth, and he sends us to all the nations. So that's the; those are the places that I see a lot of different connections and places that Jesus is fulfilling the scriptures by the things that he says and does in Good Friday, in Holy Week, in Easter, and also beyond. So how does, or how can, Psalm 22 be a part of our meditations for Holy Week? You mentioned it it, it might be chanted in some of the services, particularly Monday, Thursday, but uh, let's go back to how you prepared um, with Psalm, your, your studies of Psalm 22. How did you, you sit down to study Psalm 22? Uh, you, you referenced, uh, um, Professor Seleska's commentary. Um, what, what's it like when you sit down to study a text like a, like a Psalm like this, Psalm 22? Yeah, good question. Um, I just finished a study on some of the Psalms with my congregation not too long ago. And one of the things we were looking at is uh, we, I chose specifically Psalms that are quoted in the New Testament several different times. And what I discovered was that it's not the Psalms that you expect to be quoted in the New Testament. And Psalm 22 is a big one that was quoted. Um, Psalm 118 as well, which has other connections to Holy Week as this uh, Psalm 69 was one of the ones we looked at as well. But as you read through the Psalms, no matter what they are, you, you'll find so many of the Psalms have this progression that's so similar to Psalm 22 that starts out in this place of suffering, that starts out in this place of asking God, why are you doing this to me? Asking God, how long am I going to suffer all of the things that I'm going through? When are you going to come and help me, God? And yet, they all also turn somewhere in the middle, somewhere toward the end, toward this faithfulness that says, I, I was honest with you, God. I told you all of the stuff I'm going through and how hard it is, but I'm still going to trust in you. I'm still going to trust that you are going to deliver me out of this, even if I don't see how that is going to happen. So as I prepare these studies, uh, one of the things that I really like to do personally is I'm a big proponent of of writing out my prayers. Um, It's not something that I was necessarily taught to do, but it's something that I think the Psalms evoke in us, this, this necessity and this invitation to write down what you're feeling, write down what you're going through and put it down in as hard honesty as you need to, because God can listen to it. And uh, I've been doing this with with some of my friends. We we started this little project that we call Griefs and Graces. 
And it's, it's just us offering prayers about various things, written prayers about various things that we're going through. Some of them are very ordinary and mundane. I had one last week that was about my bracket being busted from March Madness. <laughs> um, but others are, are very, uh, very challenging things that we're going through. Uh, we talk about things like all of the different pandemic struggles, uh, whether that's waiting for a vaccine or things like just not being able to see family. And so I think that as I study these Psalms, as I meditate on these Psalms for myself, it really encourages me to write down the prayers that I have and share them with God and even to, to share them with others as David does in this Psalm, because they can resonate with other people for many, many centuries beyond when they're written down. So many good things in this psalm. A lot of a lot of great things to meditate on uh, this week and beyond uh, as we uh, celebrate our Lord's resurrection this coming Sunday. Thank you uh, so much, Pastor Andrew Jones, pastor of First Lutheran Church and Preschool in Concord, California. Thanks for being our guest today on the Coffee Hour to dig into Psalm 22 with us. You're most welcome. Thanks for having me. You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.